What's good, everybody, and welcome to the Fantasy Flex Divisional Round Props Podcast presented by Prize Picks. I'm your host, Chris Raybon, joined as always by my dude, Sean Kerner. Sean, what's going on? What's up? Uh, pumped for this weekend's games. Uh, pumped to get to watch uh, some of the games with you this Sunday. Uh, we're going to get to watch the, the Rams Bucks and uh, what I'm considering the game of the year, uh, Bills Chiefs. So can't wait. Yeah, this is the best weekend in, in sports. Yeah. And I, I like how they schedule the games. You know, th- those two Sunday games should be, oh, I mean, yeah. it's really anyone's <laughs> game. And both of those, you know, the, the Saturday games have the two bigger favorites um, of the yeah. weekend. But those Sunday games, I mean, seeing Brady against Aaron Donald in the early game and, uh, you know, then Bill's Chiefs, which I think is a true toss up uh, late. That's going to be awesome. Yeah. Uh, And uh, yeah, so looking forward to it. And uh, we'll sweat out some of these uh, props that we're about to talk to. (laughs) Um, uh, We'll obviously have the write-up on actionnetwork.com as well. Uh, But Sean, start us off with uh, your first of what I think is going to be two quarterback props this week. (laughs) Yeah, so my first one's uh, Jimmy G to go over 230 and a half passing yards. Um, I actually got this one. It was 219 and a half. I loved it then. I still like it. I think it should be closer to 245 because, um, you know, the 49ers are six point underdogs. And I think this is one of those games where I think they're going to be forced into more of a pass heavy game script. Um, We've seen Jimmy G, you know, like in his losses this season, his median is 299 passing yards where he, his median is just 232 passing yards in their win. So I think it's pretty clear that um, if the 49ers are going to be training this, we're going to see Jimmy G, throw it a lot more. I mean, we've seen George Kittle's usage go down the past couple of games because they've been able to lean on the run, but this is a spot where Jimmy G's probably gonna have to lean on guys like Kittle, Debo in the passing game and IU. So love Jimmy G over 230 and a half passing yards here. Yeah. I mean, I think the biggest issue here is, uh, you know, obviously his health. I mean, he is practicing. Mm -hmm. I think if Kyle Shanahan had it his way, uh, Jimmy G would be nowhere near this number, but he practiced in full. Yeah uh on wednesday you know so it's, he's kind of pulling the roethlisberger where he's like yeah my everything hurts but uh it looks like he's gonna be good to go and uh, yeah i think i think the packers are gonna come out with a pretty with a pretty good game plan on their side of the ball so the, the niners may be forced to to throw it a little more than usual uh for my quarterback problem i'm staying in the same game uh, i know it's bad weather which is which also may explain why some of these numbers are a little mm. bit low but i like aaron Rodgers over 255 and a half uh, passing yards as well san francisco's defense uh, is number two in dvoa against the run just 16th against the pass so they set up as a pass funnel uh, i think Rodgers is you know at the line of scrimmage he knows that he's going to get him into some pass easy pass looks you know maybe some short passes is an extension of the run game uh, to the perimeter with Devonte Adams and the like. Uh, he had 261 against the Niners in the first matchup. So not way over, but still uh, 60, six yards over. But you look at Aaron Rodgers in his 20 playoff starts, he averages 284 passing yards uh, per game. And his that's, he goes up uh, a significant margin from his regular season average in the playoffs. And that's been especially true over the last few years. Uh, he's also had this, uh, 261 plus in nine or 15 or 60 percent of his full game started this year not counting the one uh, where he left early on, in the season finale so uh, I like this up to 260 uh, and a half here I think he gets to at least uh, his 261 that 60 percent mark yeah I'm with you here I'm projecting it closer to 270 um, and yeah it's it's supposed to be freezing but I, I don't see any like uh, major winds or snow or anything like that and we saw Josh Allen he was just fine uh, and the freezing temp. So I think Rodgers will be just fine. And, you know, the Niners don't really have anybody that can slow down Devontae Adams. So I think just he and Adams will just fire off in this game. So, yeah, I, I love the over 255 as well. All right, where are you going with uh, your first rushing prop? Uh, I think it's a – I'm guessing it's a quarterback <laughs> here. Yeah, it's it's a QB, but it's a rushing prop. Uh, so I'm bending the rules a little bit here. But it's Patrick Mahomes over 17 and a half rushing yards. Uh, So he's gone over this in five of the past six games, and we've seen him be more willing to scramble when it comes to must-win games, playoffs. Um, So this is a game where I think, especially since the Bills' defense leads a league and QB pressure rate, um, we could see Patrick Mahomes leave the pocket a bit. Um, He's averaging eight and a half yards per scramble when due to pressure, according to uh, Sports Info Solutions. 
Um, so this is a matchup where we could see him scramble a lot more. We, we certainly saw it in their week five matchup when he rushed eight times for 61 yards. Um, and this Bills defense has actually allowed six straight quarterbacks to go over the rushing prop. Uh, so this is just a smash spot, I think, for Patrick Mahomes in the running game. I'm projecting this closer to like 25 yards. Uh, so love Patrick Mahomes over 17 and a half rushing yards here. Yeah, the Bills will play some man coverage, so that's always good for a scramble or two from the opponent because yep. you get the defender's backs turned in coverage, at least if there's no spy. So, uh, And, you know, it's a lot to deal with on the Chiefs, so it probably won't be a yeah. spy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, for my uh, first running back prop, I'm going to A.J. Dillon under 42 and a half rushing yards. Uh, I already mentioned it, but San Francisco's number two in run defense, DVOA. Last week they held – Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard to a combined 45 yards on 16 carries. And, you know, if you've kind of watched Green Bay's telecast this year, they've talked about it. You know, when those, when the commentators meet with the coaching staff, they've been saving Aaron Jones and trying to keep him, uh, you know, healthy for the postseason run. And that's why Dylan was getting so much work, even splitting, sometimes getting more work. Uh, in the backfield as the year went on. But I still think Aaron Jones is going to be the leader of this backfield. Uh, and in this particular matchup, I think it just suits Jones better because he's more of the dynamic pass down back. I don't think you're just going to slam Dylan uh, in between the tackles against a top two run defense. Uh, so I like this down to about 40 here. A.J. Dillon under 42 and a half rushing yards. Yeah, yeah, I like this as well. You know, it's certainly a pass funnel matchup. And I think this correlates nicely with your Aaron Rodgers, Rodgers over. Um, so, yeah, I like the idea of, you know, mixing this in with some builds with your Aaron Rodgers over because I think they do correlate uh, nicely. All right, where are you going with your uh, second uh, – your a running it's back a, prop? <laughs> we got one? Yeah, we got one here? <laughs> it's, a, it's a running back prop, but it's a receiving yard. <laughs> Prop. So I'm going with Joe Mixon over 16 and a half receiving yards. Um, so the Bengals were, uh, you know, pretty run heavy team weeks one through 15. They had the 12th highest run rate over that stretch. But the past three games were the, you know, the starters have played. Uh, they've had the fourth highest passing rate. Um, so I think it's no surprise to see Joe Mixon has gone over this number in three straight games. Um, he's ran a route over 60 percent of Joe Burrow's dropbacks each of the past three. Uh, the, the, we're at the point of the season where we're not holding him back. They're not having Samaje Pirine and Chris Evans mixing in as much. Um, so I just think this is a trend that I see continuing. Um, and I'm projecting, you know, mixing closer to like 25 and a half receiving yards. So I like the over 16 and a half receiving yards quite a bit here. Yeah, he's been over this the last few games, if I'm not mistaken. It's yeah. just kind of one of those things where early in the year um, he was down. But yeah, I have it at, at about uh, 23 and a half as well. So yeah, I'm good seven yards over. Uh, this number here uh, for my second running back prop. This one's a little riskier, but I still think the number is too low. It doesn't correlate as well with the others, but uh, Elijah Mitchell over 71 and a half rushing yards. Um, he's had 85 or more in eight out of his 12 games this year. Green Bay is still 27th and run defense DVOA uh, compared to 15th versus the pass. So I still think Mitchell is involved early in the game and just kind of hoping for, you know, a big chunk run or two to get him to to this number. You know, despite being an underdog, I still think the game plan is going to center around Mitchell uh, for as long as it can. So uh, I would still bet this up to 79 and a half. I think he gets his 80 yards um, either way. Um, it's, this number is just so low con considering he's gotten to 85 plus. Uh, in two thirds of his game. I, I know that the, the Niners are underdogs here, but um, you know, I think Mitchell's still going to be heavily involved. Yeah. I'm with you here. I'm projecting it closer to 80, but it, it's, I'd be careful with then this one, mixing it in with like a, uh, yeah, uh, my Jimmy G prop or something, just be careful of the correlations, but certainly I think the first half of the 49ers are absolutely going to still try to stick with this run heavy game plan to keep the Packers off the field. So I still like Elijah Mitchell, to go over this, even if the Niners lose, um, just he gets, you know, every single carry outside of Debo Samuel. Um, so, yeah, I, I do like this as well, but I just be cautious, you know, mixing in with some of his other props. Yeah, I think, you know, Pricewick did a good job of kind of, you know, bumping down all the players with the correlations, yeah. but um, it kind of resulted in everyone's number or a lot of <laughs> people, a lot of the Niners numbers uh, on that being too low on their side of the ball. Yeah. But yeah, it's all about the correlations. Like I think, you know, Jimmy and Rogers with the Dylan under uh, correlate and then, you know, Mitchell is kind of uh, more of a Mitchell and the Rogers one, probably the best one too. 
um, if you're going if you're going with the overs. Yeah. Um, all right, where are you going for your first receiving prop? Uh, so this one, uh, you, you know, I'm taking a little bit of a risk here, uh, but Alan Lazard under 40 and a half receiving yards. Um, so, you know, he's been on fire. He's gone over this in four of his past five games. Uh, basically, he stepped up when both MVS and Randall Cobb went down. Uh, but, you know, with the Packers having the first round by, they've been able to rest up. A lot of their players are going to be healthy coming into this game. I expect MVS should be closer to 100%. Um, Randall Cobb is expected to return. So, you know, Lazard's target share could take a hit here. And like I said, the 49ers don't really have anybody that can shut down Devontae Adams. So if anything, you know, Devontae Adams could just go off here at the expense of Alan Lazard. So um, despite, you know, going over this quite a bit in the past five games, uh, I'm going with Alan Lazard under 40 and a half receiving yards. I'm projecting this closer to like 35 and a half. Yeah. Um, the only thing I would watch here is actually MVS. It looks like he was limited uh, on Tuesday, but then missed practice altogether Wednesday. Um, so, I mean, we don't know if that was just a maintenance day because they've had so long to rest yeah. uh, or not. If not, because then it's a little – then it then it does become risky because then I think Lazard is like a full-time uh, yeah. player regardless. Um, so, yeah, just have to monitor uh, what's going on here with, with MVS. Uh, okay, for my first receiving prop, uh, this might be my favorite one of the weekend, but I'm going Nick Westbrook Aquina <laughs> under 26 and a half receiving yards he's had 25 or fewer in nine of 17 games and remember a lot of those games came with one or both of julio jones and aj brown out and both of those guys are healthy derrick henry should be back and tennessee's favored so i think that means you're gonna see a lot of double tight end sets uh i know michael pruitt is out but you still have swayman ferkser who are the top two tight ends anyway uh so i just don't think we see a lot of three wide receiver uh, in this game, Cincinnati is also 12th in DVOA uh, against, uh, you know, not number one, number two receivers, but 24th against tight end. So the, the way to attack them is with heavy personnel. You know, Westbrook Aquino would see a lot of Mike Hilton in the slot. Awuzie is also uh, a very good or has been very good this year. So two of the three pot potential matchups he could face uh, at corner would be pretty tough. And I just, you know, the – Titans are the second biggest favorite of the weekend. So there's a good chance that they just don't need to be, you know, lining up and spread out formations and throwing it around late in the game here uh, to Westbrook Aquina. So uh, I think, I think he'll still be out there over Chester Rogers. I mean, I, you, mm-hmm. you would hope he would be out there if you're a Titans fan, but uh, I just don't think this is a game where he's going to be needed much. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he plays like, something like 50, 60% of the snaps and, and only sees like one or two targets. Uh, he's averaging 12 and a half yards per catch. So I think two catches is probably his median, regardless of how you slice it. So I would bet this to 25 and a half uh, here. Yeah. Yeah. I like this. Um, I, I like your call. That they could be using a little bit less 11 personnel. I still love my Anthony Ferkser under 25 yeah. and a half receiving yards either way. Uh, but I, I do like this one. I think it correlates nicely with my uh, final prop here too. Well, first of all, Anthony Ferkser is down to like 17 and a half. Yeah, now, we're, we're, so, be. <laughs> we were on that. We were on that early, would but you, yeah, I got take, some in. Would you still take under 17 and a half? I would consider it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm, it's more in line. Like I have yeah. him and Swaim pretty similarly. Um, our, our boy Stucky loves the over on Swaim at 11 and a half, which, which, you know mm. what I mean? It's kind of like one of those things where now it's, it's in line. Uh, I did yeah. hear an interesting Ferkser tidbit though. Uh, I, I think I read this on Reddit. Uh, it may have been the athletic, but I think it was Reddit. Um, so Ferkser gets a thousand dollars every time he pancake blocks somebody on a chip oh, okay. from, uh, from Taylor Luan, I believe it is. Uh, so that's an, yeah. So, uh, you know, Ferks there, he'll, he'll, uh, he'll, he'll be doing some blocking too, even though he's a receiving tight end. But yeah, I think, I think now the best value is Westbrook Aquina just cause he can yeah. simply just not be on the field. Uh, you know, we see yep. that in the playoff games, you just kind of go at your best lineup and, uh, uh, probably the two tight ends with, especially with Henry back. Yeah. Uh, where are you going with, uh, your second? Uh, so like I said, this I think this correlates nicely with your Westbrook prop, and it's Julio Jones over 35 and a half receiving yards. I realize I'm rolling the dice on Julio here. He's had a really, you know, difficult season, constantly, you know, getting hurt in game. But, you know, I think after running 85% of the routes run per drop back um, in week 18 and having the first round by, this has to be the healthiest he's been all season. 
Um, so, you, you know, this is, this is a game where I'm willing to kind of invest in Julio going over 39 and a half. I think having Derrick Henry return is going to help boost this passing offense. They can, you know, bank on the play action a little bit more. Just this is the time to kind of buy in on Julio Jones. Granted, fingers crossed he doesn't have an in-game setback. I think he'll go over this pretty easily. Um, I'm projecting him closer to about 47 and a half receiving yards. So like, like going uh, Julio over 39 and a half receiving yards here. Yeah, prize picks needs like a Julio Jones hamstring roulette game where it's like you just parlay his quarter by quarter uh, yeah, or, or <laughs> over just like, to see if he sees, stays in the game or not. <laughs> or just, yeah, get like, I would buy some Julio insurance. <laughs> right. Yeah, like a, yeah, yeah. You know, a little bit more vig just to ensure that I get a full game. But that's that's part of the fun and, uh, you know, attacking these Julio props. Yeah, the Julio insurance, like you divide his yardage into his snaps and multiply by whatever your yeah. insurance rate is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if he plays eight quarters, he might have enough snaps. Like, uh, no, nah, yeah. No, nah, I'm over this number too. It's, you know, I, I think the only reason the number is so low is because of that injury risk. But yeah, yeah. yeah I saw that 85% route participation number uh, in the last game. And I would think, you know, if there's any game where they're kind of going to kind of unleash him, you yep. know, it's going to be here. So I expect them to kind of plan for, him to play most of the snaps. And uh, if he doesn't, that will probably, it, both of these will probably be toast. Julio and <laughs> Exactly. Yep. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, for my second, uh, I'm going with George Kittle over 45 and a half receiving yards. Uh, he's at, surprisingly, you know, cause he's, he was having a pretty big season, but he's only been over this in seven of 14 Jimmy Garoppolo starts. However, he's still averaging 62 yards per game. So he's had some really bad games, kind of like the one last week. But I think the difference here is you have a Green Bay defense that likes to play a lot of zone coverage. Dallas is a pretty man-heavy team. Uh, and Kittle's yards per route run increases almost a full yard against zone compared to man coverage. Uh, that's true of the, the whole 49ers team. That's why I was kind of nervous about them last week. But, of course, Dallas you know, found a way to, to give them a, a win there. But uh, Green Bay is also 28th in DVOA against tight ends, seventh versus number one wide receivers, and could get Jair Alexander back, seventh versus number two wide receivers, third versus other receivers. So uh, it's kind of a tight end funnel matchup. Uh, the coverage scheme suits Kittle, and uh, uh, he, he's averaging – two points uh he led the all tight ends during the regular season with 2.67 yards per route versus zone uh, and he's still at 2.54 even after that uh, dallas game with uh when he only had the one catch so like kittle here to go over 45 and a half i bet this up to uh about 50 yeah like like i said th this correlates perfectly with my jimmy g over prop um this is just a matchup where they, they might get forced in a pass heavy game script they've been able to use george kittle more as a blocker the past few games but that you know he's probably going to have to be needed in the the passing game here so love love the over as well all right that is going to do it for our props you again you guys can check out actionnetwork.com uh, for all of our, our content in terms of props and, and fantasy and uh, betting and uh, fantasylabs.com for our DFS content tools and models. You can find Sean on Twitter at the underscore odds maker. You can find me at Chris Raybon and you can find us at those same handles in the free award-winning action network app. Be sure to leave us a five-star rating a review on Apple or Spotify. And we'll be back next week with our main slate show on Wednesday. Let's cut this money.